My, my name is uh, Bean. Yeah, today I will bring the session of uh, data lexical management on uh, actual data platform. Yeah, I, I would like to thank, uh, first uh, thanks to the Northern California Alpha User Group. Yeah, this is a, a great platform for our engineer to, to exchange and share our experience and ideas. Uh, this is uh, today's agenda. Um, first, uh, I will give a definition for the DRM, is a data lexical management. And uh, we will see how actual data supply the technology to support the DRM. And, uh, and then I will talk about the details when how we design and uh, implement it in our environment. Then I will share what we learn, what we learn, and what's our experience during this uh, during this project. Okay, sure. uh, yeah, I would like to thank everybody to use the PayPal. Um, as as you see, so PayPal has uh, so many uh, active account and uh, billions of transactions. Uh, so. Uh, PayPal uh, has uh, lots of data for um, for both LTP and uh, ORAP environment. So, uh, in such a, a big uh, big data challenge, so to for cost the saving or keep database uh, be able to scale, uh, we need to uh, we we need to DRM to to support it. Here, uh, for example, let's say when, when people use PayPal, right, they, they just uh, pay, do the payment or receive the payment. Mostly people just care if money already get paid or people already paid money uh, to us. So usually we, we only query our current uh, active data. Right? We, people rarely view the past uh, payment uh, transaction history. So mo mostly maybe maybe just uh, view the month, month, monthly bill. Uh, people rarely view like say past uh, one years or past uh, two years ago state. Uh, so many data, they, they have a life circle. So most the users only access current data. And uh, then we can, so we can categorize those data based on the access pattern. Right, they can be active, or uh, less active, or uh, inactive, or historic data. Sometimes, uh, sometimes those data can be can be purged directly. Right, so if the data is a logging purpose, and the development team just need need data to debug something, maybe retention just a few months, the later data get totally removed from ORTP system. Or uh, maybe the data is offline to your to the OLAP system. But some sometimes some some data, uh, like transaction data, although people rarely query query it, but uh, we still need to keep the data inside of the database. So also due to some other audit purpose, so we need to uh, keep the data. Some 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 data we need to keep it forever. Now, depend on where the data in is the left circle. So data, it can be, it should be located on the most of, uh, appropriately storage device. Let's like see, uh, active data, right? Active data should be stored on the fast, fast, very fast storage. And, and it, it, it can supply the online user with very fast response time. I see. When user will is the history data. User maybe it, it might be okay to just take a few seconds to return history data to user. So history data can be stored on the cheaper, slow a little bit slower storage device. So right, right now, uh, right, right now mostly uh, we have some different disk type like a persistent memory SSD and the HDD. HDD. And uh, those uh, different uh, uh, storage 
uh, they have a different price, different cost. Also, they have a different performance. Always the higher, higher, higher price always supply your better performance. So we should, even the data, we should, if the data is active, uh, we should place the data into the highest, highest price and high performance storage. And if the data is uh, less, less active, or uh, maybe it's uh, history data, almost uh, uh, is history data. So we can place the data into cheaper, cheaper storage. And uh, when, we, when we move the data between those uh, storage, let's say when, when we move the data from SSD to the cheaper HDD, uh, we can also do the compress. We can apply the different compression ratio based on the data access pattern. For example, uh, we can, uh, for our code, right, we, we store the data on the disk group. So for example, we can use, uh, create a hot disk group to use the very fast storage. And we store the, the, the active data. Active data is, uh, can be an active partition. We can store active partition into the hot disk group. For less active data, we can start into the data disk group. Data disk group may, maybe can be uh, can be created uh, can be can be combined from the HDD or uh, can be S SSD. Uh, for the for the historic data, there's almost there's no read traffic or read traffic to the historic data. We can create a, uh, we can move the partition to the code disk code disk group. Cause this group is just a bunch of the HDD disk. Uh, when we move the data, we can apply the higher compression ratio to the history data. Okay, now we apply those DRM requirement on actual data. Let's see uh, what's the technology actual, actual data supply. First, uh, is the actual data has uh, multiple uh, storage option right. uh, from, from, the far, far, uh, from the higher price and fastest far, uh, storage. So actual data extreme flash storage server. This storage server, all the disks are, are flash memory disks. They are super fast. Right. We can create a hard disk group based on the flash storage, storage server. Next is the high, high capacity storage server. High capacity storage server is the combination between the amount of the HDD uh, hard disk and the flash, uh, flash memory disk. So you can see single, single server include the 12, 14 terabyte SAS disk. Also, it's a total 168 terabyte row disk, uh, hard disk capacity. It also has a capacity of 25 terabyte flash memory. Those flash memory can be used as a flash disk. Or it can also be used as the flash cache in front of the disk storage. Here, let's say we can create a data disk group based on the HC storage server. The next one is the extended XT storage server. XT storage server just have, have HDD SAS disk. And to achieve a lower cost, it doesn't include the flash. Also storage software is an option. For the, for the code partition or code data, we can move the code data to the XT storage server. And uh, we can also do the compress. Uh, actual data introduced the uh, HCC uh, hypercurrent compress. It has a more compress option. Uh, so uh, in traditional ARCO platform, the ARCO supplies the uh, ORTP compress. ORTP table compression typically provides storage saving around uh, between two times to four times. But uh, on actual data, it, uh, uh, the HCC compress option also has other uh, has four options: uh, HCC query low, HCC query high, also, and uh, archive low, archive high. So based on our test, uh, 
HCC, HCC uh, hybrid curtain compression can achieve more compression ratio. Compared with the OMTP compress, we, we can, on average, we can bring another four times storage saving. So uh, when we move the data, let's see, when the data is life cycle chain, right, we move the data from flash storage server to HC storage server. Now, when it's uh, code, when it becomes the history data, we move it, move it from a you see story server to XT story server. So all those data operation, we need to do it online. It can we it cannot block a user transaction. So Oracle, uh, yeah, Oracle support so many online operation compared with other other database. Uh, so uh, since the Oracle eighteen C we can just uh, move the table partition or table subpartition online. When we move the sex segment online, we can change the storage option, include the table space and the compression, compress, compression, yeah. Also, the Intel C it also support the data file, uh, data file online movement. Now for the DRM, uh, it's uh, just uh, we, it, it, we just need to move the data smartly, right? Now we the the DRM framework need to understand the data access pattern. He need to know the given one table, right? This table can should should be partition table, right? Rich partition is uh, is accessing right now is uh, accessing actually by the front end application and the uh, rich partition is uh, inactive has a less read and write and the rich partition is is a code has a has a no write and no read and uh, once we get the data access pattern uh, we can access the compressed policy and archival policy to based on the data data access pattern And uh, and then we, we can start a job to do the data movement. Here, so we move the data based on the partition. Partition is a, a key point for a very large database. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's a basic for the DRM. Since we move the data right, at the partition level. So here, we prefer the range or interval partition, right? Suppose the one table is the is a hash partition. For a hash partition table, all the data, all the active data and the inactive data, they are stored in, in same physical partition. But in such case, if we, we if we want to move the data, we have to move the move, move the data by by record. We have to move the data record by record. Now, if we partition the data, right, we can move the data at the partition level. So here uh, we prefer the range or interval partition. And another thing is, uh, since uh, uh, from uh, we have some requirement uh, for the application on the application side, when they run the query, they, they is prefer that they always add the partition key. They can they only access the partition that they, they need for for performance. Yeah. Also. Uh, it's better that, uh, that we don't. Uh, we always uh, create a local index on the partition table. So if there's a um, Oracle on online table move, it can maintain the global index. But if the table is large, it uh, take uh, a lot of resource to maintain the global index. Now, so one critical point is. Uh, uh, for the DRM, we need to understand our data. So we need to understand, given one table, we need to understand its uh, data access pattern. So here in PayPal right now, we use those uh, three technology, three Oracle technology to, to decide the, the data access pattern for, for one table, for its partition. Here, um, one first is called free count heat map. Uh, free is the homegrown 
um, to, uh, performance monitor tools at PayPal. Uh, um, it's a, it read many dictionary view to get a lot of different metric, let's say, based on the VDAR segment state. Now we can, based on the metric uh, state name of the DB block change and the logical read, or based on those metric, so giving one segment, we can know uh, how many log logical read and uh, how many block change happened for that segment in a period. Now, giving one table, and uh, then I think giving one table, giving in past one day, we can know how many total DB block change, how many total logical read happened on the table in past one day. Also, in past one day for each partition, like at each partition level, we also know how many, how many logical read, how many uh, DB block changes at each partition level. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, active, active, uh, active data, the partition that is called active data, it should have a very high logical read and also block changes. And uh, for the code partition, for the code data, the partition store code data should have almost a zero block read and block change. For the frequent details, uh, you can check the presentation, last year's presentation. Uh, my coworker Manoj have, have a wonderful presentation last year about the frequent. And another is the data age, by saying, giving the, based on the partitions metadata, like when we create the table, right? If it's a range table, if the table is based on some day, day times occur, right? Usually based on the high value, we can get the, giving one partition, we can know which, which, uh, when the data, um, we, we can know the daytime range for the data belong to that partition. Also, if some table has some column like a question time or a last modified date, then we can we can query the sample data to know the to know the data age for that partition. Another another uh, another dictionary view is the DBA time modification. Is uh, when when application mod, uh, changes one table, no matter it's the insert update the delay, uh, this dictionary will, will record the, the number of the DMM in a period of time at, a, at each partition or sub partition level. So it can tell us, let's say, in past uh, one day, which partition have a rack and uh, how, many rack, how many DRM it has. Here is a sample of the frequent heat map. Yeah, let me explain these uh, curves. Now we have partition, partition name and a partition position. DC is the buffer change. Uh, LR is the log logical read. Uh, it means the, the total buffer change and the logical read happened on this, uh, this partition. I think let, let's look, look at the partition 85. 85, you can see the EC 24 hours in past 24 hours, the buffer change is 3% 3 3 of the total buffer change. Now, so we can get uh, how many buffer change in past uh, one day. It's just the BC multiplied by the BC 24 hours. Now you can see uh, this, this take BC 24 hours the vertical Vertical means uh, here is 100, means in past uh, one day, 100% all, all the buffer block changes happened on, on this partition. Also, similar, we have the logical read. Right. From, from this view, uh, we can know the 85, partition name 85 is current active partition. At today, only this partition has the right. All the old partition, it doesn't have right. 
And based on the logical read, we know majority, you can see, based on this vertical metric, means in past the 24 hours, 92% logical read happened on this uh, partition. So we, we, we can know, okay, this uh, 85 is current I2 partition. This page shows the data age. Now here, for example, this table, this table's uh, uh, high value is uh, Unix uh, timestamp. So we can see based on the high value, we convert it to a daytime. Here we can see it's a monthly partition table. Now giving one, uh, giving one partition, so we can know, okay, it's the data is created between, I say for uh, between uh, rich mass. Now, this is a real uh, DBA type modification. This metric is, uh, is almost, is very real time. Right? Here is a simple test. We insert uh, 1000, uh, this trans transaction insert 1000 card. Now we immediately see, okay, uh, we have insert, we have 2000 insert. So all those three, three metric, uh, heat map, data age, and the DBA type mod mod modification, they can validate each other. So based on the heat map data age, now we get the data access pattern given one table. So we can know which, which partition is the currently active partition. Now, re, re, also we can know the partition's uh, data age. So for any partition has a partition position higher than the current uh, uh, active partition is the future partition. Okay, now for the Oh, for the old partition, right? For the inactive partition, based on the heat map, we can heat map. Now we can define some policy. We can, based on the heat map, we can define based on different policy. We can define if it's a uh, uh, inactive warm data or if it's a cold data. Yeah, for example, we can predefine some policy. Uh, for example, for this HCC archive high. Here means uh, BC 19 days equal to zero. Means in past 19 days, there are uh, zero buffer changes. Means uh, uh, no block, uh, no block changes. Also, this one means uh, let's say for this one, uh, logical read LR is logical read. Logical read uh, in past uh, 24 hours, logical read if on, on this partition is uh, lower than 1,000, 1,000 logical read. Okay, we can, if we, if some partition heat map meet with uh, this logic, okay, we can think, okay, this partition can be, we can compress this partition using the, the HCC archive high policy. Okay. Also, uh, we can, since we know the data age, we can also define, okay, let's say, I only want to compress, I don't want to touch recently recent three months data or recent half year data. So we only touch the data, maybe one year ago data. Now, when we do the, we define the compressed policy, right? we can, we also define the, it's a target uh, table space. Now, we also have a, a config table to start the, the table space policy. Let's say, for example, if 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 the table use uh, should be used the PDD HCC data quarter uh, quarter policy. If its policy name is uh, quarterly, now when we create the table space name, okay, we will uh, create the table space uh, with the year tag and the quarter tag, and uh, the when we compress the partitions, partitions will be stored into target the table space with the, with the yearly and the quarterly tag. Also, uh, when we create a table space, we, need, uh, uh, we also assign the disk group. Yeah. 
we can also have other other settings like the the size of the table space or the external size of the table space. Now here we we define the data storage policy for the partition based on the partition's uh, access pattern. Now next is that we just uh, launch the job to do the data move to make sure the partition's uh, storage policy matches the uh, match is the uh, target target policy. Uh, here. Uh, the most simple one is the online online partition move. Online partition move will all, will automatically maintain the index. So, but there are some bugs for the online partition move. Uh, there are some performance issues. You know, note the bug. Yeah. Uh, if the table is uh, is uh, too busy, if the QPS on the table is very high, when we move the partition online or self partition online, sometimes uh, we see the high IQ session caused by the library cache condition. What we see is that during the online position move, now our code will invalid the, the cursor multiple times. Um, our code is working on some enhancement to reduce the impact of the cursor invalidation. Another way is the uh, exchange. We use the exchange partition. Uh, let's say exchange, exchange partition. When we exchange uh, partition, we first create a temporary table. The temporary table will have the target uh, storage policy. Will uh, it will have some compressed? We it will we will apply the compressed policy. We will create the this uh, temporary table on the new table space. Now we also also take care of the index, take care of the partition level or subpartition level distance. Now for those operations during during uh, for each DDR. Now we also, uh, when we work on one partition, but, uh, we also monitor the DBA time modification to make sure during the DDR time there's uh, no change to the to the base uh, base partition. Now once the, the temporary table uh, is created, we also do the checksum. We use the function YA hash function to hash every color, every record to get a checksum. On all, all the report for the temporary table. Now, the next step is uh, we uh, for the base for the base table. So we will lock the target partition or sub partition in shared mode. So in this case, the application can still read the table, read the partition. But if the application want to do a write to that partition, so it will wait for the lock. Now. We first lock the partition to make sure since since the exchange partition is actually is not an online operation, but at every step there might be right on the on the base on the original partition or sub partition. So we don't want we don't want to lose any data during we archive or we compress the data. So for here we first lock the partition or sub partition in share mode. Now we do the check checksum also on the source partition, on the original partition. If the checksum is the same, it means okay, all the data is a, is a copy. All the data in the compressed table is the proper compressed. Now we do the exchange partition. When next next is the uh, so Next is when all the let's say next is the uh, we we move the data file online. So when the table is table space is full, right? For the for the compressed table space, we we have a, we define a max size threshold. When the table space is full, and uh, when all the segment all the partition inside the, the table space, if we it meet with some access pattern, if based on the heat map, all its data is. Uh, is there's a no read or no write or very little read, um, and all the segment in that table space is uh, maybe a few years old. Okay, we can just uh, move that data file from uh, from uh, one storage server to to another cheaper storage server. For example, we move the data table space 
from HC storage server to XT storage server. Okay. Uh, during this project, uh, uh, we have some learning. Uh, uh, first, is, uh, when, when we do the DRM, so just a multiple step, like, uh, for example, online table move or exchange condition. So for every sub, sub steps, it's uh, locked into some table. Right? We lock the, the sub step status, lock the timing. Right. If the table set, set, uh, table set, uh, segment size changes, we also lock this before size or after after size. Then, based on the based on the task history, right? Today, if I want to apply the compress policy on one position, so if based on the history, we can know its uh, compression ratio. Okay, we already know the compression ratio. Let's say it, it will, we will reduce the size by four times. Okay. Then when we create a new table space, or we can check the target table space to see if we, it has enough data, uh, enough space or not. Then we can, if we don't have enough space, we can auto allocate the new data files. Then another is, uh, I said, when we do the table online move, right? So probably we, we need to use the move it in parallel. So let's say if we use, uh, if we move the uh, partition of um, uh, online using parallel eight, then later Oracle will uh, try to auto rebuild the index, but the rebuild index it will use the it will also use parallel and uh, it will also use same parallel, but uh, it will need a more parallel process. Then, so what we see is the uh, rebuild uh, index build is the. Uh, uh, is much faster than the, than the table table move. It means the index build has more I/O throughput than the table. So to make sure we doesn't uh, cause the bottleneck uh, for on the I/O subsystem, so we need to proper properly design the how many uh, parallel process we use. Then another interesting case is the uh, some 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 table is very large, but uh, but each sub partition is a uh, is not not very large. Like some partition is a range sub partition. It can one partition can have more than maybe one hundred twenty eight or two hundred fifty six sub partition. But each sub partition size may not may uh, may not be large. Maybe just a few hundred hundred megabytes. Right. In in such case, let's say. Supposedly, original uh, partitions, the table space, it extends size is 100 megabytes. Now, if we create, a, uh, when we create a, the archived table space, if archived table space use the same extension size, let's say archived table space use the 100 megabytes. Now, the minimal for the compressed segment, the minimal size is 100 megabytes. Uh, maybe instead of 100 megabytes, maybe Segment data is just 20 or 15 megabyte. So here, uh, for for some table, we may need to to try to reclaim uh, the space as much as possible. Maybe usually we we will use a smaller external size for the account table space. Another is the. Uh, if we use the exchange table to do the compress, right? When we create the temporary table, we can assign an order by uh, order by cost based on the some column, right? If we do the order by, all the same all the same data, all, all the similar similar data will be stored together. Uh, so in this case, HCC can HCC compress can have much higher compress ratio. Uh, here is uh, one example. So one sub partition, its original size is a uh, is seven gig gigabyte. Now, if we if we don't compress, if we don't order by any color, right? The the default compress size is uh, twenty seven. Uh, it's just uh, two point seven gigabyte. Uh, but uh, if we here if we order by the user ID, 
right? Giving one table, you can make have a, a lot of uh, power user, right? Now those power users record will be stored together after we order by the new ID. Now here you can see we get a more space, uh, more space saving. But, uh, but uh, if we do the order by, right, see top order by, during the CTAS, it, it, it need a temporary uh, table space to do the shop. So um, we need to make sure there's uh, enough space in the temporary, uh, temporary table space. Mm -hmm. Next is, uh, here, if we use the exchange partition solution, right, during the checksum, so we need to hold the shared lock on the original original partition. So supposedly there might be, if at that time application the, the try to do some write application will get blocked. So we we will we also have a, a separate performance monitor model running in background. It can check if it found that the DRM process DRM Oracle session is blocking some other session. It can it, uh, it can try to kill it will kill the archive session to release the lock. Another thing is the, the related to the data age. So if one table has uh, too many partition or sub partition, right? Query the sample data at the partition level or sub partition level, it may cause too many literal circles. Now, uh, in case we can use the, uh, we can construct the row ID and uh, use the row ID range to query each partition or sub partition. Another thing is uh, here we only talk about the data compress. Now, now we also, let's say some table also has too many, a lot of index. Index size maybe sometimes maybe is bigger than the table. So we also need to compress the index. Oracle also has a, a lot of option to for the index compression, index compression. But uh, here we see, let's see, is uh, at the current uh, release, is uh, is not easy to to do it online. Right? When we exchange the when we do the exchange table, so the table uh, table segment and uh, the temporary table segment, it can. The table at the table level, it can have a different storage option. But when we exchange the table, the index storage option need to be same as the original table. Also, when we rebuild the, the index subdivision, what we can change, we can only change the table space. So we, we, uh, we can only change the index subdivisions, compress the logic, uh, com compress policy. And uh, if we want to try to modify one partition compress, it will mark that uh, sub partition, all, 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 all the index sub partition are usable. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we cannot do it in an online or on computer environment. Okay, here we have the summary. Yeah. Uh, for the DRM, it's just a, a data portal. So first, uh, we, based on the data access pattern, we need to identify the active data in active data or code data. Then we need to define the storage policy, also define the compressed policy. Right? Let's say active data, we start in the hard disk pool. Hard disk pool, we create a FC actual data server. Now for, for less active or inactive data, we, we create a the data disk group. Data disk group is created on the high capacity uh, storage server. Right? When the, the data portal just uh, based on the data select circle, it move the data from hot to data or either from data to data or from data to code. 